we've got more series to come. I think this is our fifth series of the day already. Look at us go. Beastie versus B. I think this is the one that everyone's rubbing their hands together. You know, it almost just feels like this is the one everyone always keeps an eye out for. A little bit of B and B because these play style clashes lead into some pretty absurd games more often than not. Yeah, this is a banger of a matchup every time. I think what's really cool is the way that B, I feel like his style is very like counteractive like not counteractive it's very like it's very annoying i feel like when bc's trying to play and then he has to deal with b's aggression and i think whenever we watch it it's usually like very bombastic games that feel really exciting um and like it's just all over the place very aggressive very like punch you in the mouth style R rts and just aoe4 in general and i love seeing it and a really interesting stylistic choice here is uh Beastie allowing Roos through the bands and B allowing Mongols through the bands is a bit of a difference. Both players, as you predicted earlier, would, would bend out the Ottomans here. But uh, again, we're seeing that difference of, of style. We do see Mongolian Heights in the mix here for that, maybe later to become a relevant factor. So some interesting thoughts on that. Uh, Beastie getting Malians in the draft, um, banding out... and uh, Sorry, banding out the... Um, he banned out the it. yeah. The so he had the, he, he banned had, out Jean Dark from yeah. B, he banned right? out Jean Dark. He had the Delhi yeah. banned out from him. Uh, interesting yeah. part is like the Japanese was banned away from B. He loves the Japanese. He's got some really sick timings on the fast yeah. castle on the Bagisha spam. But the interesting part is like, you know, your opponent's gonna get Delhi, and BC didn't opt for the Japanese, which is like one of the better right. counters. Um, right. And I think he anticipated Jean Dark versus Delhi, so he's got some spicy in mind. Little note here, by the way, these two players do not rate Abbas as highly. Um, sorry to say it, folks. Most players rating it in the D tier, absolute trash tier. But you know what? I'm sure there's like some people, they secretly have a throwaway account. They play on the Abbas's. They love it. They thrive in it. <laughs> the sad reality, though, is that, uh, you know, your wife has discovered that you play the Abbas's. She found your Smurf. She found your details. You are a filthy Abbas's spammer. You, you are no longer alpha for her. And she's left you. You could have avoided this all if you just hid your data and pretended to exist in a different country, she wouldn't be able to track it back to you. She wouldn't be able to discover that you were, in fact, a one-trick Abbasid player losing all those games. If only you had Surfshark to help you with that. Fix it for the next wife, is my advice. Get your hands on three months free, courtesy of the EGC TV uh, code. Make sure you don't have to worry about losing your loved ones, because they discover that you are a filthy Abbasid picker. And I can guarantee you that all of those deep, dark secrets, even the fact that every once in a while you like to pick the English a bit too much will be hidden, courtesy of Surfshark. You didn't realize you needed it, did you, Winston? That was <laughs> that was a brilliant reading. <laughs> that was that was great. I was you took me on a journey right there. I feel like I was just transported, like Aladdin's magic carpet. What a what a I, journey. I, I didn't want to go too deep. Like, I was like, I'm already stinging. I'm not going to mention that now your wife has left you for a Chadley deli picker, right? Yeah. Like, what? Where are you going with this? <laughs> like, I, I still don't know where I'm at. Like, <laughs> All you know? know, like, you know what's important? It isn't important that you don't know where you're at. It's important that everyone else doesn't know where you're at, which is why you need those VPNs. Boom. All right. Anyway, <laughs> focusing on the series, because we've got a fun one. Delhi versus Sean Dark. This is going to be, like, all in aggression on both sides, right? Like. Yeah. I'm wondering who that favors because I feel like I haven't been seeing much Jean on the ladder recently, but I've been seeing an odd amount of Delhi. Yeah, and I guess we'll see how BC handles it. Um, we saw B's Delhi game before, not really going in his favor. Uh, wasn't really able to get that snowball going, whereas BC just demonstrated in his previous set that he really understands Delhi still and knows how to play still, but like knows how to play even with all the new new synth additions and everything. Like he's still really oh, solid there. So we are robot. Vodka, let's quickly disconnect. Okay, there we go. We should be good now. Are we good? I believe we are Fandappy Dozy. Okay, there we go. Let's get ready. Try a robot? So, no, you, you, you're not a Cylon. Am I just I don't robot? think... I, no, you're not a Cylon. I don't think you wear the red dress well enough. Um, let's move on into the action, because it's time for the series I think everyone's been excited to watch for the day. It looks like we need to actually get our UI overlay back up, because we need the details. That It's going to be a best of three between Beastie and B. Beastie, open this series to Jean d'Arc. B, going for the tried and true and competitive. It's going to be the Delhi. 
Yep, yep, yep. Um, important to note some of the sacred site positions. So, looks like B is going to be playing towards that north side early. Although his berries spawned on the south side. And, uh, looks like BC has a really safe second TC spot if he wants it. Kind of on the south, near the gold, and securing the hunt on the south as well. He also has a nice double gold over there on the right for another TC or the first TC if he wishes. Kind of interesting options for him. Yeah, I'm looking at like the way the wood spawn as well because I've noticed Rocky Canyon has like two forms of wood lines right now. This is like your normie stuff. This is the stuff that you've probably all seen before. Yeah. But we've also seen the qualifiers, some funky spawns where it, like it spawns the wood line in a wall. It's like it's like a mini little wood wall effect. Um, those maps are more exposed. These ones are much more turly, much more defensive. I think that might lean in favor of Jean Dark here, right? Because it means Ghazi Raiders have a harder time striking at your wood lines. Yeah. It's interesting. I wonder how BC plays Jean against Deli. Do you think he even uh, risks 2TC? I feel like you give a map. No. I feel like that helps you play for the... We, we, we so, saw it like we saw it kind of early today. It was French instead, but it's kind of a similar effect, right? That B Lucifron series, where I think you have to go one TC, you just, yeah, and you reach a point where you make a choice, right? Like if you win, if you start winning and you build a lead, then you're like, do I greed or do I Assassin's Creed, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, BC, no, that makes sense, right? You you have to play into Delhi's game. You really can't yes. ignore it, right? Yeah, and BC has a reputation, right? Like some people just think he'll take the greed every day, but I, I disagree, especially with a sieve like John Dark. If he sees an opportunity to keep milking a fight for XP, he's gonna take. Yeah, it. yeah, that's interesting. I think we'll see how it plays out, right? Mm. How much sheep have we got, by the way? Because like that's really important for John Dark in this type of game. That deer seems close, but it's really not. So, oh, gee, okay. Um, I've seen games like this before. <laughs> the quick Winston. It's not good, yeah. And he's exploring where B's already been. So he's not going to be getting a lot of uh, sheep. And it always frustrates. It's like a shaking of the fist, right? Like a deli player taking all the sheep. You're like, can I just have a few, please? No, but you don't even need them. And then there's just like a creeping smile on their fi face as they go, but you do. Yeah, this might be tough. I mean, I don't, I don't know if B's scouted the left side here. So there could be hope for BC to get a couple sheep. But this is going to be a very sad scout. If he goes around the back of the base, I think he loses out, right? Like, it needs to be left side. Yeah, has to go. If there are any there. Not many left on the map. He will at least have Jean in level 2 format straight away, right? He's not using extra villagers here. But he's also not gathering stones, so it means, like, his his grip on food is loose, right? The deer is a back spawn, but it's also across open battlefields. It's not like you've got one of those spawns where there's a tree line that you can wall to. Hmm. Oh, sorry. So, I feel like this is on people's lists of sieves you just hate to see win. Like, where, where is this on your list? If you had to choose between one of these two that you'd like to see lose. Players aside, right? Like, are you wanting to be like. I want to see a Civ lose. I don't really think that way. I don't know. Really? Like, I feel like Delhi and no. John Dark are up there for people, right? Because, like, Delhi. Delhi and John Dark? No, not De really. So, like, Delhi's that, that strict not kid that you play games with, uh, but they always have rules that you must follow. They're like, no, this is the way we play the imaginary game. You're like, oh, Jesus. And then John Dark is like um, a 14 year old turning up to like a play fight with five year olds. Hate both those type of people. Yeah, I think I don't really have like civs that I hate like that, where I want them to lose just out of spite because I don't like seeing other people play it. I think I like all the civs. That was very I mean, diplomatic and wholesome of you. I, I don't think I don't think I dislike them so much that like you know I I find secret joys in one of them losing. No, mm, that's true. We 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 only judge your bass effects. No, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Even the wholesome Winston has to take a double chain. Like, oh, well, maybe. Well, maybe, maybe sometimes. No, I don't mind. Uh... Uh... Well, oh. okay, that, if There's I'm not mistaken, sheep. that one sheep would be like 25% more sheep for Sean Dark right now. <laughs> yeah, this is really rough for Beastie. He is out of sheep. He is officially out of sheep. This is... Not because he wants a boar, but because this is the only source of food he can secure. Um, oh, this is rough. 
I mean, B is so. just loving life, right? Like, look at his spawn as well. He got retracted deer, he got retracted berries, and you can argue like knights will contest him, but you actually need food for those knights. Oh man. So there's one knight and another one in queue, and I think that's gonna idle his vill production if he makes that knight. I think Does this has to be a lot. Oh, oh god. Uh. Oh. Uh. Nah. He's, he's panic dropping off. So idle time yeah. there, not ideal. Remember, this is John. But that wasn't that wasn't that bad. That was that's not like, that's like a one village advantage, right? Like it's. No, that was like half a fill. That was only a couple seconds. We have the cleave potential here. Dangerous. We'll have to start backing off a little bit. There's no Gazi yet, which is why DC's feeling pretty content. Knights are coming to assist. I love that, dude. Ooh. That was sick. He kept the aggro, made him away. And it means the knights, which are meant to be countered by these spears, get a bunch of freebies. Yeah, both both the hunter and the melee Jean d'Arc um, really have good ways of dealing with spears early, which really enables a lot of the knight play. I do love that wolves now pop up with zero XP. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, the red thing it's so change. unnecessary, yeah. <laughs> just, but like, yeah. just to remind you that you used to get more XP on the map, smiley face. <laughs> this ball, though. Oh, DC quick to react. Oh. That means that your progress on Pumba is going to be reset, though. Uh, Divine Restoration, you do not want to be pumping it here, right? If it's just for Jean alone, that's like, you feel like you're losing out. It needs to be your knights are hurt as well. Yeah. Well what? played. Dude, Beastie's oh. outplaying on the micro here. We'll see. If Jean goes down here, it's still really expensive. Remember, his economy is not great right now. Like, he's now on the board, so things are starting to work for him a little bit better, but he does not want to buy her back right now, right? No, but he's he's just healing her up over time. He has like, to heal, yeah. The scary part is what's coming next. B's finally getting to Ghazi. So, like, this is a very dangerous point at this phase of, uh, phase of Beastie. I love the aggro, dude. That right. was sick. Getting the board involved. Cool. But we're on a little journey here. Where are the guards? Like, if they're running straight towards Jon, they're not going to cut it. If they head towards the wall, they might be able to catch her and trap her. Whew. This has been some <laughs> sick micro. <laughs> like, that has been, like, very clean. And it's against B, who's, like, absolutely no slouch when it comes to this sort of micro, right? Like, he's very comfortable playing the style. And BC just keeps getting the upper hand in every single engagement. BC's like, Alexa, play epic fighting music. He's just in the zone right now. He's going to make it back to the gate. Look at the timing. Wait, what? Oh, no. That was a misclick there. So for the first time, BC, a little bit of a mistake there. We'll get the gate up a little bit too late. Jean does still have the Divine Restoration, though. And now, because it's only Ghazi, the Knights can clean up. This is sick. Was she no? Boom. Yeah, okay. There we go. <laughs> he beats him in. Oh, wow. Ghazi, like, they, they have not found the punch they're looking for. Beastie right now is giving you a masterclass on min-maxing John. That was pretty cool. He is popped, though, at 40. Villager, wow. not going to be able to keep this up. The wall break coming and in. Horror is gone. And so now he has no food. food. Right? Like, I think he went berries in the corner, but, like, if he gets constricted in his base, you do not want to be building farms at nine minutes. This is super awkward now for Beastie. He does have four archers out on the field, so those are going to be able to make their way over to defend against the Spearman Ghazi push that B has been putting together. Hmm. Okay, so he's got the berry still, right? It's not like complete flatline, but you're pretty limited on what you can do with food. And you are going for a 1-1-1 one, one, one comp, which is very food heavy. Ooh, super food intensive, right? It's like... I mean, you have Consecrate to help, but he Consecrated the TC, which makes a lot of sense given what happened before. He just needs food income. Oh, these knights are moving out for a raid, and they're going to get caught here. This is not looking good. It's not going to be able to get past. They should be able to rotate. They're going for the, the Scholar, Gazi's, right? The guys are going to chase on the north. Yeah, but the north side, like, the, the Scholar should be found. That's a freebie. So B, I think he just lost. Yeah, he's lost him. Great read. BC, like, he knows the timing, right? Like, the way this build has played out. You know roughly when B is going to feel confident to come out. And I love the wall here. Powerful tool here for the Delhi. Infantry just able to build that up. Dude, this is a really interesting game so far, right? Like, you're not getting this explosive fight of a million units going down. But it's all the little chips that are adding up for both sides. I'm impressed that Beast is hanging on the way he is, considering how bad that sheep haul was at the beginning. He is starting to hemorrhage a few losses here or there. And he is getting outmassed on military. 
So like what I'm looking for is what's Beastie's golden solution to hold on? He's not scaling archers, he's trying to get spears, but with the limited food access, I don't know how doable that is. Yeah, this feels like it's the pressure starting to mount up, right? The Night Mask, still only five knights, two of them are super duper hurt. Only a couple of archers on the field even. The Spearman gonna be trying to come out, but trying to match Tower Victory Spearman is not where you wanna be in this situation. No, it, it's worse than that still. Um, whenever you have Spearman with Ghazi, like what you do is you start the fight by like sending the spears in and then you run the Ghazi pass, right? Because like you can't brace, which means, you know, archers, Jean, all these things become accessible. It's so scary. And this is so dangerous. Moving out the deer, the spear spots out the berries. He's a smart cookie. He'll identify where you are now, right? There's only one place left that you could be getting food. Yeah, and he's looping around now, but it looks like BC's gonna try and beat him in the middle of the map. That's way too many ends for BC, though, right? Like... Yeah, look, when you said me, I'm like, ah, angry and leave. Yeah, like, <laughs> this is not a fight you can take. So, two sacred sites locked in. B has a natural rotation towards that deer now to take the third sacred site. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is... You're trying to find a way, aren't you? You're like, I'm trying to find this? a way to justify like how BC could win this. It, it doesn't feel super likely. Like I feel like B has done all the right things, right? Like He hasn't thrown away too much XP. Hmm. You always yeah, know sheesh. you're gonna be, Yeah, like you always know you're gonna be at a disadvantage on sheep count when you're up against berry sieves, but like this is one of the most depressive ones. So I mean, when I yeah. saw the sheep count at the beginning of the game, I remembered a, like a five minute GG by Wham, I think in EGC finals. And I, I thought game. Yeah, it's like the difference of the player, right? BC said if he has a one percent chance he'll continue on, which is why he hasn't waved the white flag, but made no mistake about it. This opening sheep rotation, the, the sheep roulette, it def it defines like an eighty five percent win chance at that point for B. Yeah, this feels like it was a lot of like, the sheep here and this is it. the deer I, the, gone. Villagers can try to shift away, but Beastie, the chip damage really is adding up. I love that. Just run beyond them, trap them in. Several more villagers going down. Gold workers will pull away in time, but that's now an eight eco lead for B. Make it nine. Yeah, and no threat of a second TC anywhere soon for Beastie. He's just trying to pick off reinforcements with his remaining knights. I mean, it could still come together, maybe, but B is approaching 100 population. The Realistically, the way that B could lose this is if he makes that mistake I've seen a few Delhi players make recently, where they try to all in the base, right? That's the, the one thing you don't want to be doing is Delhi. I don't really see them as a, an end with a GG feudal push, right? The whole goal is you take the map and force them out. Great raid over here from Beastie to find some return fire. A few new troops are coming out to deal with that. And keep in mind, if Beastie loses these knights, they're irreplaceable. He doesn't have the food income to get new ones. Yeah, he's gonna try queuing up. Oh fewer, no! But yeah. uh, that's expensive. Meanwhile, sending half his vills to the hunt there. That is like ten vills. A third of his vills are on this hunt right now, so he's gonna have to stay here with. Because he doesn't have enough resources even for like two towers or anything, right? Like he's just gonna have to camp here with his army until he has enough units. Like two outposts doesn't do anything against that many guards either, right? That's the other problem. They'll just burn it and then they'll wallop you when you try to repair. It's so frustrating and it's problematic because now Beastie has this immobile army that predictably has to sit in one location. In fact, it's having to go wider. Look at the desperation. Beastie is playing onto the second deer stack even further away. Yeah, this... Man, this game really fell apart. It's so rare that games get so obviously, like, impacted by the sheep, but man, is it a threat if you mess this up. It's and like, I wonder, it's... was it just luck with this the scouting pattern, you think? Uh, or did he... I, I didn't watch... I didn't I, I'd have to attention. go back. Yeah, I'd have yeah. to go back and replay it. Like, I know there's a lot of sheep that typically spawn around the center, right? On Rocky Canyon, uh, Rocky right. River as well. I think Rocky River is more biased for that. It just like it's one of those things where you are always, almost always going to get less sheep on average than a berry sieve. But this amount is like it, it's GG territory, man. We've seen pro players at the highest level cool games because they got four sheep. It's so hard to play, even with a sieve that typically is aggressive on the map. Because in this case, you're up against a sieve that matches that aggression. Yeah. 
but he's also playing like super well still with the lead, right? Like he's he's really executed this well. Like the raids, the counter raids from BC haven't done off done too much, and it feels like every time BC's tried to go for those um, cutting off the reinforcement plays, B has been able to handle it and like deal with it, where it's almost always like some sort of trade. Um, so yeah, looking really solid for B. I'm really liking his position. His one potential recovery arc is like, I think what BC is waiting to see, he's, it's almost like a stress test. How good is level three Jean? Because we're 16 minutes right. in, Jean did get some good early XP. We're probably looking at like an 18 and a half, 19 minute level three timing. And that will be the moment where BC's like, okay, show on the road. Let's see if this is actually good enough. Yeah, I mean, with the three free champions, maybe, and a bigger AOE cleave, it could be good. But you have to be worried with 30 archers, she's gonna die pretty quickly if she tries to step up. Um, I mean, she'll tank a lot from the archers, but it wouldn't be super dramatic. This is good raid yeah. damage for Beastie. But the, oof, the I feel like there. knights are even more important for Jean d'Arc than they are for French. Because, like, if you're playing long feudal, obviously French or Jean d'Arc is your biggest tool, right? It's so great. But for her, with Divine Restoration, it's more effective HP replenishment in the fight compared to, like, Spears and Archers, right? Like, they just... It's much harder to thread the needle of low HP with these units because the base pool is so much lower. Mm -hmm. So, so try to burn out, take away one sacred site. So, good time to do so while B is split a bit across the map. Does this fight go that well for him? He has less military. And, and right his now, units are all split. cheaper. Yeah, right now it's split, right? So, like, he's seeing these spearmen all around the back. Unfortunately, it's going to come at price, right? Take the sacred site, but lose the knights. And now we are talking about a Jean d'Arc game. 17 minutes in, no knights, but at least we have got that sweet, sweet level three. Yeah, the champions are in, and there is the threat of a big AoE cleave. If he can kill the spear mass really, really quickly, or even, even better, if Jean can get on top of the archer mass from B and do, like, two cleaves, he could kill a lot of them. But this around B. Free angles coming in. Garzi baiting the spears away, and that's gonna get the backstab over. Just too many cavalry units here. BC, it feels like this fight is just a bit too split for him. Archer mass a bit too large. He's gonna go for a cleave. Does get a little stab on it. The numbers are not in his favor here. He still has a divine restoration to work with. You have to pump it soon. You've seen the target fire come in. That's gonna force it. And this should be an overwhelm. A 20 military lead. Divine Restoration no longer there, which means John Dark could not go in for one more cleave, and the Spearman count is just too low. B, a fantastic micro to keep the Ghazi away long enough to now dominate the fight. Man, I love watching these two players play each other. <laughs> the fights are so dynamic to watch, right? Like, that was so cool how they were maneuvering and everything, right? But, yeah, BC just not really able to get a good engagement there. Gonna have to retreat. And B is just in such that. a... Yeah, B's just in such a dominating position now. There are so many Ghazi alive at the end of this, and still the Archer Mass at 32 units. It's just too much. <sighs> Beastie immediately with the rebuy. He refused to call it. He's trying to macro up towards Castle Age, but with losses like that, a tech up could kill you now. I mean, B, he just done such a good job of keeping the Archer Mass alive, the Ghazis. The Spearmen are expendable here, right? Like, there's no Knights. You don't really need Spears for anything anymore. So I love that priority and the way he stretched it. Just the six around, and now we should be looking at the death push, right? Melee tech upgrades yeah. in, siege engineering on the way, and you no longer have a backbone to defend with. Yeah, I think B's just gonna try and shore up, re recapture the sacred sites, and just settle in again and remax because he knows he can do it faster and better, right? He's even trying to aim maybe for a map. I, I think you castle. You have to go castle. Like like so if you're not gonna all in playing sacred sites, that's ten that's ten minutes. You do not want well, to give not, not for the timer, there, right? right? But like I just mean grab the sacred sites, oh, yeah, re yeah. reorganize and then push. But it looks like he's gonna try and castle before even poking. Uh, I say that as he goes to poke. I mean Beast is gonna give freebies, right? Then again, this is a bit ambitious. Archers will get back behind the wall. And yeah. Compounder Defender now on the way. Beastie, this is also problematic because he's going to run out of resources quicker, right? The first is already gone, the second one's being exhausted. And there's not many berries left here. Meanwhile, you look on the other side of the map, B, because of the way he's walled, he has access to all the central berry deposits. Yeah, and he still has hunted in the very north of the map that he hasn't even touched yet, right? So he's got lots of access to res for a time being. Beastie's rebooting an army, man. I... He's not the type of player to just call this the moment the tech up comes out, right? Like, he'll probably try to take one fight. Maybe, yeah. But yeah, yeah. He's going to try one more time, it looks like. 
But B's already got another 1,200 food in the bank, so he can go Castle Age twice. <laughs> Um, with all of this food being invested in the army pretty soon. We'll see what happens. So Knight's gonna be the first unit from B. That's nice. Two relics um, on the way already. Three sacred sites locked in as well. Like, it's so much gold trickle, you can just spam lances. Um, mean more beastie. He can't think about spamming knights here, right? He's being cost efficient with spears and just trying to scrape together that tech up. Ooh. I'm trying to see what B's going to build next. Apparently he's only got knights in Q. I think it's, it's just lances right? and then arms, right? Like, you just spam heavily armored units. Yeah, and if BC doesn't get to Arbor Lead Tree A fast enough, it's rough, right? I like it. Yeah. I like that from B. Just waiting for the upgrades. Yeah, so there it is. Finally, the Q as well. So adding in archers as well. So archers. Oh, that's He, he canceled the men at arms. No, he has good crossbows. That's interesting. So, like, you mentioned the Arbitrier. He doesn't believe BC can get Arbitrier together. Because if you thought your opponent's good Arbitrier, you do not build crossbows, right? You, like, you lose that. So, he's only paranoid about a reboom into Knights and maybe some men at arms. Because, in, like, in fairness, a lot of Jean players do go men at arms when they go Castle Age. You don't typically do it when you're behind on the tech up. But the reason why Jean is one of those civs that tends to is because it's effective HP units, so the Divine Restoration is like more valuable. And oh my dear god, these walls are cursed. <laughs> I like it. There's a gap there though, right? Yeah. It just looks like he's give, like you know, it looks like someone's giving someone a wet willy right now, you know. I don't like that. I yeah. do not like that. I do not like when you said that, and I wish you do not say that. <laughs> the <laughs> the way. Scary. Whoever no. came up with that, by the way, like it's such a dumb thing. It was probably like because it's a bully thing to do, right? It was probably the the, the first kid that got that ha happened to him. His name was probably Willie. Kids do or fall for some weird things, like like um, what was it, the whole nipple cripple thing? Until like the, like everyone's been through that until one kid in like the locker room's like, whoa, that gives you cancer, and then like everyone knows it sounds silly, but they believe it. They're like. Whoa. Fair enough. We're going to stop that. We'll just wedge you. What are you talking about? Okay, had a, we're moving on. We're moving started. on. Back to the Move game. On. There is interesting developments happening on the field because BC is adding in the Arbor Latria. <laughs> and um, B, like you said, he's aiming for crossbows, lancers, and an elephant. <laughs> That's so cute. It's a victory stop, elephant. Stomp, elephant. Stomp, stomp, elephant. No, I like it. I like the addition. I think it's cool. I think it does. I think it gets pretty hard countered by this many spears and herbalists, but we'll see. It might have a good. It might have some opportunity to be annoying. It's the Delhi cheerleader. I mean, the main like even without the elephant, this army wins, right? Like the Ghazi now coming in. They're not upgraded yet. They haven't even been queued up for it. Actually, it's just gonna be a big fat clash. John, we're losing a lot of HP. Gonna have to pump that divine restoration. Frontline just trying to hold, but the numbers are gonna force the fold. A retreat behind the, the wood line, but that. Wool is not going to last long. Maybe just long enough for the elephant to arrive. Uh, Stompy Oliphant is coming up, though. The uh, Honestly, that wasn't a bad trade for Beast to go, right? Like, there were no upgrades yet on these units, so he was just able They're to take gonna be a really cost-effective trade. John doesn't have heal anymore. She just gets target fired down. She's dead. Great cleave there, but the problem is the front line is breaking, right? Men at arms count is looking good. Veterancy for Arch is about to come through. Crossbows are also here. And there's just nothing left. Then Beastie is going to be picked to the bone. John flops dead. And that should be Beastie flopping dead in game one. Wow. We're really, really, really impressed by how B played that. That was that was like the classic B playing Delhi game. Um, really rough just for the competitiveness of the game that the sheep spawn determines so much of that early game. Like BC literally had to idle the TC and go out to a boar before he was ready. But I, I don't think that's takes anything away from how well B played. He played well. He got the, um, he he scouted well enough to get that sheep advantage, right? We have to give credit where credit's due. He accomplished that in the early game. He also, um, he also should have played that mid game very nicely, cleaning up the sacred sites. He didn't overextend to try and take the third sacred site on the south. Um, he just kept centralized on the front, the first two, and played that central positioning and used that as like kind of a hub to attack into Beastie's food economy, which he knew maybe intuitively that it was a little bit weaker when he saw the sheep count. He probably felt much more confident about how he could play it. Um, and it just was really explosive and very dynamic game from them both. I mean, it was really cool. The micro battles between those two are always so fun to watch, right? Like, it's just so cool. Yeah.
I, I think like Beastie played really well with the initial John hole, but like imagine if he had some more sheep behind that, right? Like what could he have done? Could this have been a very different game? I think like B, it shows you that even the Dell, you have to show a certain amount of respect to John. You don't want to feed over that XP. Um, it's actually impressive that Beastie like made it look close to those initial skirmishes. But the reality is like this eventually just turns into a resource game, right? And B, he got the right rotation. It gets him a win. It gets him a match point. And gets him into an interesting pick here. <laughs> Most people rating this Civ bottom four right now. Order the Dented is definitely something that still feels like it's an experiment mode. And Mongols coming out from Beastie is a strong swing. I think this is what he expected as well. Like, there's no way you want to pick Mongols against Chinese. I think Chinese actually kind of have a little bit of an edge here. So it seems like Beastie may have read the pick correctly. The question is, what's better, Mongol spears or those big Chadley gilded spears? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. It could be really tricky for Order the Dragon to get the Dark Age spears out and feel like you set yourself up for a good macro. I think, obviously, B's going to have, like, much more prepared strats um <laughs> and they're going to be much cleaner <laughs> but from my experience trying to do these really like when you try and pull order of the dragon in too many directions i've always felt at least when i play them that like you just kind of like it just kind of falls apart a bit you do everything a bit more mediocre right whereas when they're able to like play focused it feels very excellent at what it's doing um yeah. so we'll see how b is able to handle you know, if there's a split focus on docks, if there's a split focus on Spearman, if there's a split focus anywhere, or if he, or is he just going to give up the middle entirely and maybe play for a couple archers and horsemen in Feudal Age and just aim for that timing? That could be a different way to play it as well. Mongolian Heights has a, a lot of natural food on it, so if he's able to get a lot of the sheep again, for example, I think that could be a solid way for him to play, but I'm not sure if that's how we'd want to do. I don't think giving up the middle of the Mongols feels good, so I'm not I, sure what I, your thought process is. I feel like it's rats, rats. And the interesting think, thing, yeah, like Gilded oh. Spearmen are really freaking strong there. Like it's actually they are. Pretty spooky. It feels rough. <laughs> the macro behind it is always rough, right? It, it's weird because you think it is, but at the same time, you have to remember like Mongols don't get any economical advantage outside of like the, oh, stone to get an occasional free Spearman until Feudal Age, right? Where they either get Yam for the efficiency right. of moving or they get trade. Meanwhile, like the longer this stays in Dark Age, I think the more it favors OOTD because those Gilded Villages are just so damn efficient, right? The 28% gathering rate, it's pretty bonkers. And also, if you have to scale into more buildings, they have the faster build speed for that. So we'll see which way each player wants to go. I think Feudal is definitely a very strong point for B, very big strong point with the Men at Arms potential. Hmm. But we might be locked into Dark for a while here. We hop into game number two. B already on match point after a good execution of the Delhi. Beastie whipping out the Mongols. Hopefully they'll be able to find more sheep this time. If not, there's always fish. You really think that the way to play OTD here is to... I was would about that, to say, not that spawn? the barracks. And would that spawn? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really strong. Like, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, B, he could, he's going to rush the dock, but then I think you could, like, get two fishing boats and spam spears afterwards. Um, yeah. It's an interesting idea, especially also, like, if you leave the villager out here gathering, it's not the biggest, like, it's not the biggest compromise or vulnerability because those villages are naturally more tanky. Yeah, you have a bit of time, right, to get everything set up because Mongols are going to, off more often than not, start with the Ubu, right? Um, they're almost always going to, right? So you have that little bit of time to get things set situated. BC going right for the barracks, though. B is holding onto a lot of wood right now. It's like, like more than you need, I'd say, for like just getting fishing boats. Well, oh, two fishing boats, right? There we go. Yeah, it, it's the rack. Oh, I, I, I didn't want to jinx it, man. I was like, it's a smart idea because now you, you have defender advantage. It's so sick. My brain was going there, but I was like, that's, that's so risky. There's no way. But B understands now. Like as these two spearmen come in, <laughs> they're already going to be counted, and it means that when you get your second spear out, BC's only going to have maybe three in the fight. It just keeps you ahead. Hmm. Okay. This is so cool. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'm excited. So, like, I think you got the four spears here. It's very expensive, but now you have the fishing. I, you know, I've, I, like, it's been a long day. I'm having that moment where I'm like, I feel like a god. I, you called it. You called I, it. <laughs> I knew exactly. Like, my brain was literally, I was about to say it's going to be a proxy as well. But I didn't want 
I, I was like, maybe that's too far, KP. Maybe maybe we were gung ho, but then we have to remember we've got B here, right? Like the one of the few people that just pro scouts and... on the ladders right now, one of the few people that will do some weird all ins. We should have sent it coming. Whoa, B she's going really far forward for his gold. Imagine if B goes for an outpost next. That's probably too wild. It, it's like very effective because these villagers build it fast. And there you go. Surprise! You want to you wanna play? No, no, you don't. Second spear's already on the way. Like, like Beastie's outnumbered right now. If he times this right as well, he can pinch from behind. B, okay, that wasn't optimal. Second spear is there, though. Yeah, the... The big boys from 3DD. He's got Lord of the Dragon Spearman. They cost a lot, though, to get onto the field. Mm -hmm. Beastie has a boat? lot of sheep. Um, there's no fishing boats yet. Yeah, but I mean, like, does he have one in queue yet, Ethan? No, no, no. He's no, no. just making spears. You said it yourself. They're too expensive, right? It's like... It's too expensive. There's a weak point in what he's doing here. If he has to spam so many spears, he runs out of straggler trees. There's going to be a gap, and that's where BC can get an advantage. Yeah, He's I'm kind of wondering, like, what's the plan? Just to keep making spears, then? What's the point of the dock? Just the threat? I guess, for, say, if you stop yeah. making spears, I'm going to add fishing. I exactly. guess that's it, right? Yeah. 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 But it's like... I'm just trying but, to understand, like, the full scope of every decision, right? It's like, does it all work together here? Maybe. It must. Ironically, it, right? this game is literally being defined by who gets more sheep. Like, the series is, actually. Because, like, if you check this game, he doesn't have enough sheep to keep doing this. He's going to lose. Check Beastie's sheep count. He has, like, 10. And he's supplementing with stone, right? So, like, like a lumber, B is going to have to stop doing this sooner. And now he has a liability because he built racks and dock here. It's so rough because he's just not fighting it. He's just letting the spears hit him. He doesn't want to get surrounded because he's outnumbered, right? Like, you, your opponent has more than two to each of yours. Oh, well, now this is a good fight for him. Good backstab. Right? Focus fire is going to come in, but now, like, B just peels away in time, right? Like, the key details, BC needs to use the maneuver speed arrows very well. Low HP on, like, what, two of these spearmen, though? And it's becoming more difficult for B to find the low HP targets. Oh, man, I... I don't like the look of this for B right now. Like, it, it's it's weird mm. because when you look at the raw count, they're kind of comparative, but if you look at the bars on these units, at this scale, B can't really turn for a fight. Gonna be forced yeah. to, though. The first fishing boat is in queue now, so that's gonna be the first way that B tries to gain an advantage economically this game. But yeah. as Vodka just pointed out with this cursor, we're looking at a feudal age timing soon for Beastie, and that could mean... That could be in a range. That could most likely we're gonna see the spearman upgrade right away, right? Which means that's gonna help invalidate a lot of the advantage that these Order of the Dragon units have right now, which is their quality. This might be a very quick GG. Uh, not if the Vils are caught. Yeah, Beastie, like, I don't think he's gonna get caught quick enough because B, he lost the scout, right? Like, if you check his vision, he's blind. So he, right. he can try to predict whether they're still on gold, but he hasn't got confirmation yet. By the time he does, you know, Beastie's already got enough to get Wheelbarrow as well. Villagers will pull away. Oh, he's gonna... five short. He's five, five short. Five short of what? The screw right? Isn't it 35 gold? Uh, I think he's still got gold on those guys, right? Oh, yeah, oh, he's holding gold. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if he's holding the gold. Yeah, 10, oh, 7, yeah. he's okay, fine, he's dude. Got B is going all in, by the way. He's up to eight spearmen now. He's not teching up. He's very slow on this timing. And now, like, this is where things get scary, right? The spearmen are trying to intercept reinforcements. You know there's going to be a hardened upgrade just queued immediately. Wait, has he not dropped off the gold? Okay, there we go. He doesn't. He, he's, he's queuing and cancelling. He's confusing the crap out of me right now. Okay, it's on yeah, the way. I'm... I'm lost. I'm confused. Deep I'm scared. Breath. Hold me. You know, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, B is nowhere near that age up, though. This is kind of what I meant, though, when, when we were talking about Order of the Dragon going these spears. Like, the macro is so different. Like, it is so hard to do. And if you get distracted or accidentally make one too many, like, maybe B just made a few too many and then realized, oh my gosh, I've kind of screwed my macro. 
or like you mis you misplace a villager or two, and you realize you're you're floating gold instead of wood, and or it just doesn't add up, right? And suddenly okay. the game feels like it falls apart a bit, right? Like yeah, it's so I, quick with the Order of the Dragon that this happens. It's like pulling one villager, like you basically head shoreline fishing. The dog maybe makes more sense. It's gonna sound weird, but if you pull like four villagers, because then you have all that shoreline fishing. So like it. The fact you don't have fishing boats and it's a bluff to get your opponent to invest is like better then. But like maybe the argument, that maybe Beast tried that and said, okay, that's just too much idle time. I can't do it. But either way, like Beastie had the appropriate reaction to this. B, he's going to lose this fight. Villager is at least going to be taken down, right? Like it looks like he's Ooh, not going to get the dock up. But the price of this for B, it's a meat grinder and one that he's losing. Two villas go down and. Is he losing it that bad? No, it's the yeah, no, it's what, yeah bad. look at the health bars now. Like the yeah, yeah, yeah. once it's a re-rally, like these numbers, B in the next fight, like Beast will lose two spearmen and B will lose like four. Ay, ay, yes. ay. <laughs> oh my god. This is a dominant position now for Beastie. Who does finish the dock immediately keys up Galley. That's the smart choice, right? It can fend yep. off the bear uh, the spearman and then he can torch the barracks, but and, and that should be GG. Like the moment that yeah. happens, like the oh. he's pulling what? the villagers. This is not gonna work. It's not gonna be quick enough here. Yeah, cue up a demo behind this. Honestly, <laughs> he does. He gives oh up a demo my behind God. this. A nice idea, but B, my friend, I'm afraid too late. Archer ship's gonna come out, and this is gonna be the death of him. He moves deeper. Demo ship might well. not get enough time to come out, but I just don't think it matters anymore. GG gets called. A third game will most definitely be a treat. I just wonder if that one's going to be decided by Sheep as well. That would have been so funny if it was a demo in Q first. That would have, that would have just instantly killed all the bills, right? Actually, no. Would it have be because they're Order of the Dragon Bills? They're a lot of tankier. But... 65 health, uh, 85 base damage. So like you could if you get it deep enough. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot. Yeah, if you get it in the middle, you'd probably kill a few. Yeah, that that lot. Like I I, I said like the that, that was designed that. Uh, decided by sheep and it kind of was like it wasn't as rng as the last game so definitely not taking anything away from beastie but you could see like when it turns into a spear race it's like who has more food right and because you're not got fish online like that's why i was saying maybe if you pulled the villagers to gather food on the fish line it makes more sense because i think he had like what was that six or eight sheep overall beastie beat him in that department this time and well, probably gets revenge, and it means we get deeper into a series we're starting to handcuff the choices left only two options left as we hop into game number three and i think if i recall correctly didn't we have a creative map choice here it was was it oh no it was dry oh, arabia yeah. sorry we opened a rocky canyon so malians versus chinese Jamalu. i haven't seen this one in a while i think malians like this matchup right because mm, it should be like an eco game right so like if your opponent then tries to do an all-in it's going to be chiganu and you just build jabs so like it's more about how you react. Like Beastie's goal should just be to get extra mills and get castle age quicker. Um, and B, it almost feels like the Chinese have to be the aggro party here. Yeah. Oh. I don't know how B wins this game. I feel like this is a decent civ matchup. I mean, it's definitely playable for B, right? Um, you have timings with castle age, right? Maybe he goes... This might be the Pro Scouts build we alluded to earlier. I think this really? is the... Yeah, yeah, because like the, the previous game where he didn't do it, that was against a heavy Cav Civ in the Fuel Age. And while Marlins have heavy Cav, they don't build them often, right? So if you just rush Castle Age off of the back of Pro Scouts and go Clock Tower into like Palace Guard spam, you can win this. Yeah, I think, I think Palace Guard B is like how, how you can win this matchup if there's a big Feudal Mass. But, like, haven't you just given up so much for that? Like, you're not pressuring the pit mines. You're not pressuring the cattle boom. Well, how would you if pressure BC can Chinese? get to, like, deer as well, like, it's just his position's going to be so solid, right? How would you pressure it with Chinese, though? Like, That's why it's a weird matchup. That's all I'm saying. It's just a weird matchup. Yeah. Right? Like, like you it's, could, it's, you could, it's hard you could, to play this one. Like, you could Barbican rush, but Crackety didn't make it to the main event. So I'm not expecting that here, right? So it's like, you, you're probably going to be a bit more chill. And the reality is, like, maybe you get scouted and you see Donzo's move out from Beastie to like one site, but he can't guard, guard all the remaining sites. So realistically, you should be getting at least 14 deer out of this play. And it means like when you race towards Castle Age and you spam Palace Guard out, it's much okay. easier to defend your economy because those sofas can't just raid the flanks, right? I, I like the idea. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, 
I'm a big fan of it on Trina. I like it on Malians, and I like it on Roost still. I think there's and, not many other sims that I like Pro Scouts on. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty handcuffed to a few. And B has like an interesting approach where if and I've seen it from Corvinus, I think B and Corvinus have like been the two have been doing it the most where they'll take the risky deer and drop them halfway home to mm -hmm. make sure like when the counterplay comes, it's too late, right? Because like if BC sees that, it's like, oh, you're taking my deer, spams a few javelins, and it's like too late. And then you just like you're pulling them from mid map. It, it's it's interesting, right? Like you don't get the deer back as quickly, but you guarantee they're gonna be there. So we'll, we'll have to see. We're like a minute away. The alternative remaining choices, um, Beastie could have tried English. English against Chinese isn't too bad, but like on a map like Dry Arabia, I think they can survive. And I think like what was the other pick? Yeah, that's interesting actually. B had Roos. That's what I was confused about. Is he's leaving Roos on the board? And Beastie, like, let him have Roost, too. And so maybe that's why B was thinking he didn't want to play it. Is, like, he's thinking, ah, B it's Beastie, like, he's, he'll have some sort of answer to it. But I, I can't imagine that. I haven't actually seen B play that much Roost in tournaments. He doesn't prioritize the pick, I feel like. I feel like he it, does. It, it he does. has to be. You know, like, the more, like, it has to be Pro Scouts. Like, that's the detail that I'm looking at here compared to Doom Roost. That's I, a I, crazy I, call, but... I'm I'm down for it. If it happens, you win. Yay! Woo! Woo! Go Jazz plan, hands. Um, not to see. No, it, it's an interesting thought, mm. right? Like taking the deer away doesn't hurt Beastie. He can go for cow, but it just makes your timing safer and stronger. Uh, I guess we're gonna find out. Mm. Game number three between B and B here. Marlin's in the hands of Beastie. And B with the Chinese. This should be a, a 50 50 matchup. And well, the funnest part about it, Winston, is it's a matchup that shouldn't be defined by sheep. That's my favorite part of the game. Don't lie. You hate it as much as I do. <laughs> yeah, it, it can often feel a little disappointing when a game is decided by sheep. But, I mean, moving on, we've we've already seen that enough. I think this game will be very different, so let's see. Malians versus the Chinese. Let's check how these spawns added up because it looks like Marlin's Ooh. oh dude BC's spawn is kind of like weird it's safe gold but it's further away um it's in it the back fun, yeah it's in the back it, it, it's we talked about it in a previous set right when it's split on either side of the map it can on either side of your map like you kind of want them concentrated uh, which is nice for for them but like here I think this will play okay because it's kind of tucked in the back there's also like he could just go way up to the north if he really wanted to and wall it in um for the second pit mine and feudal, but I don't think he'll do that. But it's an option, right? Yeah. Um, uh, where does he go with his rotation? I think they split the map, right? So, should be a decent sheep pull on both sides. Should be. Oh, wait, no. This is bold. Like, typically you have the edges Chinese because you see everything first. But it almost feels like he's slightly out of position here. Okay, he gets ahead. Misses out on a few sheep, but he's lapping to the corner. Maybe it's like four or five sheep out here. Now, the big thing about Chinese that makes him kind of busted on scout rotation and openings is like once you see your opponent, you can just mirror his movements and stay ahead of him. And it's like you're just griefing them, right? It's the troll in the game because now Beastie's mm -hmm. going to just ride ahead and be like, where the hell does a sheep? But funnily enough, Beastie's rotating left first. Yeah, I think maybe he's expecting this play from B, but I'm not sure. It's tricky. It's hard to know. It, I feel like the they've off. played each other so much, right? Like, I, I think it's legit just the sheep drop off, and it doesn't matter because now he's gonna get back for the corner. But that almost worked perfectly for BC oh, just because of the natural drop off. <laughs> All right, this is a good haul. Like BC gets enough to survive, but now it means that B should get the remainder of the map. Yeah, this is rough. He's coming up here, not realizing it's been scouted. Doesn't even spot B's scout as it lurks around the edge here. I'm telling you, man, the Chinese, the Chinese vision is busted. Like 25% on a sky, like, oh, it doesn't look like that much. It's just, it, it's the info it gives you in the early game. Like for a series that has been defined by who gets more sheep, right? It matters so much that you get that. Of course, as we highlighted, both sides can function without big sheep pulls. Um, namely, I think the Marlins have an edge there compared to the Chinese that they're behind. What I'm curious to is whether we are going to get that pro scouts build. Like he's only got two people in gold and it's Imperial Academy first. So maybe we're just getting something a little bit more sane here probably like 2tc song are you implying that your build order thoughts are insane 
yes. So like you, you've listened to me now for several hours. Do I need to say more? <laughs> Should we nah, go back nah, to the nah, nipple? Nah, 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 nah. It's not insane. I think it's an interesting idea. There's, there's still they potentially might even go for it, right? You can get a lot of gold from the, uh, the officials, right? So it could, it's still possible, but you need wood, right? You need seventy-five. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you have the mill, so like that box is at least ticked, and you can supervise it to get it really quickly. Wow, but completely out of sheep. That is crazy. <laughs> that is so crazy. I remember when I said it won't happen again. He's, he's got like he's got a few left over, right? So he's guy's got to bring back two, and then he's got three carcasses there. So he should just be able to flirt it. But yes, it's really freaking annoying at this stage to have to add in cattle to club. Well, it's just three games in a row, right? Like that, it was this drastic between the two players, right? Like, it, that's rare. Like, <laughs> it's really rare to have it happen once, right? And I don't like to like obsess over it, but well, you you kind of have look to look at right? this. Like, <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> like, that's after he's gotten a lot of his sheep. Like, that's. Ugh. I think he just needs to change his name. He's not a bee anymore. He's legit a sheep. Just a sheep whisperer. Yeah. We, like, all, we all have that one friend that you play against and they get all your sheep. I have a couple I have a couple friends who do that and it's not fun. You like he like enters lobby and he just whispers <laughs> in his, his mic. He's like, Davai, Davai, my little sheep, come to me. And they, they they just all natch like all the neutral sheep start walking slightly towards the Chinese base. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Interesting beastie getting some early eco upgrades. Still feeling fine. Like the, it hasn't really affected the build order yet, so it should be okay. Like, you can adapt at this point, right? <laughs> it just doesn't feel great, man. Like, he only has one pit mine up, and he's going to have to, like, invest some of that into cattle to munch. And on the other side, like, you know you're up against a greedy eco sieve, and now, like, you can't... You're not feeling like you're being greedy. You're not feeling good. It is going to be the barb can secure the gold, just in case there's any sort of early aggro. Not that BC can afford it with no sheep. <laughs> What? Oh, he re... Okay, he rebuilt it. Okay, I was like, where That's did that better. gold go? Okay. Yes. Um, it's not securing the deer, but you know what? Like, I don't think you really care about deer when you get this many sheep. Mm -hmm. Time to see, uh, what's it called? Prof Scouts? Mm, right? Maybe? Like, with this right? many people here, like, it's a lot of villages on gold, right? It could still be Pro Scouts. And this War Scout upgrade, I think oh, it's going to be too cute. late. But it's still a cute idea. That's cute, but the little gold he has before he has to spend it on bisons. Bison. I don't think it's that bad. Like, it, it's that little bit of pressure. It adds up. Every, every, I always feel like every point of each village HP, like, matters at some point in the game, right? Like, it's really rare, I feel like, for a vill to just be able to hide in the mid game with, like, one HP and not just die to something. Are you that guy who, like, bitterly remembers the slight against him years later? It's like, you villager, 22 <laughs> minutes from now, yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's gonna matter. It'll matter. Watch, watch. Also, if BC just goes nerd mode with, with that warrior scout, like, it's still in this base. Like, those vills are somewhere, right? Um, and he there still has spears. warrior scouts. Yeah, Wait, there's enough spears, but forcing that is awesome. What? What if Beastie goes pro? No, I'm not going to go there. I don't think Evilon's going to be hmm. pro scout. Like, if this game was more food stuff for B, sure. But, like, now that he got so many sheep, and also the fact that he's seen it's going to be the Warrior Scout upgrade, he knows the stables, right? You don't want to play scouts into stables. That's the quickest way to just lose any advantage you have. Yeah. Makes sense, though. Uh, B adding in the stone now, looking for the TC to follow this up. We saw him, he's probably feeling pretty confident this game because of how decisive his win was earlier today with Chinese in a very similar game style, right? Um, this time, though, is his second TC. Where does it go? He's already kind of walling off the hunt on the left, so it must be golden hunt on the north? No, no, no. Or he, maybe he just at go home. For no, no, no. So two options here. You either drop the TC next to your primary, which Chinese do all the time. Yeah. The home. Or you build it on the left ear. Because if you have vision on both these scouts, you can now walk through your gate and right. his rotation to count is too slow, right? I feel like it's just going to be a safe. It has to be at home. Yeah, like like Chinese, because he doesn't want to build more spears, they're always like very... I don't want to say sub Oh, it, he's going he, up. Really? Yeah, he's okay. going up to the hunt in the golden on earth. But he's got one spear. This is yeah. a bit greedy. More are on I mean, the way. But there's only two warrior scouts. Like, it's not that scary. Right? How like, many players have said that before and then died? It's only two. 
Okay, in, in credit <laughs> to him, he queues up more spears. And like, I think this was a good timing because he scouted the other scout going left, right? So pretty good read there. Yeah, he's so just gonna see this immediately. So now we'll get to see a pretty honest reaction from him. Like, what's what's his game plan here? Is it just keep cattle booming? Because he's, he's pretty far along. He's got the spot yeah. for the, the landmark. I think he just goes for it soon, right? He, like, he has to. Does he, he just go to. castle? Yeah, you have to get castle. Like, you go castle yeah. and then you spam sofa, right? Um, it's your best uh... strength right now because, like, if B is going to mirror you and follow up, like, he could keep spamming spears, but then he's stuck in feudal. So his alternative is what? He goes into castle and builds house guard. So if it's good against that. And then over time, as your eco scales a bit, now you can afford more wood, you add in arches. So it, it, it's pretty like chopped up, cut and dry, like easy peasy, standard Mali and stuff. And he has also got those pit mines insulated behind him. So like he's going to have yeah. a lot of passive gold now. I like how he did what I was thinking was like, there is the closer pit mine, but I think you go for the one in the north and then wall this. Um, isn't exactly how I imagined the wall. I thought it would go through the other forest, but like I like that play from Beastie. I think it's just smart. Get the safer, really corner one, and then he has a third one, like ready to go as soon as he's castle. Um, I'm actually so really does. impressed that B like has secured this much land. By the way, I mean BC's just not really playing very aggro. He has the two scouts, but he's not even like hitting the walling vills right now. He's just oh, getting yeah. information and making decisions. So but, but it's credit to the decisions being formed by the information this one scout gave, right? Because like most right. players would right. see that warrior scout opening and they wouldn't like, for example, that deer on the right side seemed questionable because you see warrior scouts, right? But right, right. Because he reads it's not an all in and he plays the optimal approach, not getting too many spears. He now gets the wall off that area. He gets beer, he gets boar and he walls himself fully in. And if you look, he's actually going to beat Beastie to Castle Age. Yeah, with the with the age up and everything, it'll be it'll be really clean for him. But I think Beastie's economy is going to skyrocket in Castle with the Fulani, right? Like, things are going to look really good for him. He's going to be able to get a third pit mine really easily in the north if he wanted it. He has the wood to quickly build it. He might even start building the houses soon. The walls uh, are problematic though, right? Like, or is he adding stables right now? I think he's adding. Holy stables. crap, dude! If B gets this wall, that whole Fulani point doesn't matter because you wouldn't have enough income, right? So. What scares me right now is that Beastie, he needs to start pumping sofas ahead that's of the tech ops. But that's okay. double barrack, triple barrack. Is it is he, Musafadi? He's going Musafadi, Musafadi yeah. to counter the palace cards, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like where that falls apart is B's, I don't think B's going to look to rush you now. He's playing. Oh, Avil. Whoops. It's okay. Avil, we got, we're, 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 it's okay. We, we've China. We've got plenty more. Oh um, my gosh. A hunting accident <laughs> strikes again, dude. <laughs> Oh, but beast villagers just look at look at it. It's like if we like stick them together, we like Luke Skywalker taunt on this. It's just more meat. It's fine. <laughs> but the um the interesting thing about going Musafadi here though is like if this was Palace Guard spam, it's really smart. But if this is just spearmen with Nesta bees camping, you don't hit right. Yeah. Oh, dude. It, it's it's logical what Beastie's doing. What he's doing is he's insulating himself against the biggest, most likely threat. But now with all these walls going up, the timing's kind of skewed. You're not going to be able to burn through. You can burn through walls quicker, sure. But like when you get through and you discover that it's mass spears, you're not going to be happy. I think Mr. Fadi are still going to be okay here. Like it's not wasted per se. Yeah, but if you think about the stats, it's not better though, right? And like, no, it's not ideal, but like, it's not the end of the world. Like, Musafari are still decent at raiding. They can torch these walls and just apply a lot of pressure. Like, the yep. walling looks really big and nice for uh, B, but like, there there is a flaw to it in where it's not really it's able wide. to defend them, right? Like, it's really wide. Like, you just torch different parts and it buys a lot of time, which is really good, right? And I think B wants that. I think B is aiming for a really solid late game this game. Like, I think that's what he's that, that's what that wall tells me a bit is that. He just wants to buy time, have things go his way. He doesn't want to take any horrible trades, right? He's not all inning on palace guards. The spears kind of indicate a more defensive style to start, um, which I kind of like. I kind of like this play from B. I think trying to sidestep where Mullions are the strongest, which to me is this stage of the game, right? Like the early to mid castle age when the economy just fully kicks in, right? Just trying to sidestep that, play defensive, and get towards, you know, early imp where I feel like Chinese are really going to shine, right? Yeah, where they ramp up. There's still, like, if this game yeah. goes too long, you start to do the granular transitions awkward. One upside, though, is, like, this Musafadi play. The reason why it usually looks a bit dicey is you don't have enough to immediately blitz the base, right? You've revealed Musafadi. So now B has the heads up to, like, prep 
four spears and then just set up one or two outposts, which means stealth won't work here. Like, I think what happened is Beastie was like, oh, he's, he's going to have potentially Nesta Bees or Palace Guard, right? And this ticks both options. But this is like the advice the wall gives you. It won't keep the Marlins out, but it gives you time and a heads up as to what comp you're facing. Yeah. So now that wall on the right is open, but it looks like B has enough forces there to, def to defend. But the front, no units to defend. The oh, nice target. The official going to get targeted. He's got the taxes and everyone's like, no, keep our money. He, the official runs <laughs> back what? in. He's like, haha, idiot. I brought fret. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? Oh, what a huge pick up potentially. No, B is playing really, really, really crisp. That's the beast cover it, right? Like, this is the main army. Yeah. It was only a small raid force. Um, wouldn't be surprised if B, like, adds in a few more walls. There is a breach coming on the left side where he's got deer stack. But remember, he's got that secondary wall he set up at the start of the game. Yeah, so two layers. You know, is he just going to turn and fight, try and keep the army away, I guess? Yeah, well, and you see he what I mean about Spears. Here. Like, Spears yeah, is but, so good against Musa. But look at this. I mean, but still, Spears will die if you fight too long against them. Like, it's not like a great matchup for either one, right? No. Like, yeah. but it's, there's it's a, a lot little... of units from Beastie, right? Like, he's got yeah, a but like, once you reach the walls, you've got a full melee comp against crossbows, right? So you just get killed if you try to break. Like, it's it's just so frustrating where you've got this full melee comp and you're like, okay, walls count on me. Um, and the thing that you're keeping an eye out for is like B gets the two or three nest of bees, so he can cover both sides. It's like Beastie, he's trying to apply maximum pressure, get all the resources off the map, and I think his next goal should be to keep him pinned in while taking sacred sites. Yeah, I think that's what he's gonna do. We saw him really early on in Castle Age build double mosque, and he's been getting the relics. That's already four in mosques, right? There is one relic in the far south, which seems kind of unattainable for Beastie, but sacred sites are next. I'm telling you, man, it's a funny, like, these spears are actually holding much better than you really, really ever expect. And while this is happening, we always have to be conscious of the fact that it is Song 2TC. So, like, yes, Fulani is powerful, but you said it yourself, like, the longer this turns into Limbo, even when he's getting these little extra leads, the game is kind of crawling against him, right? Like, he wants that big fight, but the way this is heading, by the time he gets it, there's going to be enough troops for B to defend Nesta Beats. It just depends on if BC is ever to get one of these raids to actually deal damage. It looks like B continues to successfully deter or de like uh, help hold back all these raids and not lose too many bills, right? BC, through all this aggression, has only secured six villager kills, seven villager kills. So somewhere he's getting more. <laughs> but yeah, but like he's got little raiding forces everywhere trying to keep this penned in. Ah, there's Secret your, there's your villager in. kill. So he killed one. Granaries are now on the way, so like this is actually the weakest point of B's game where he could die. Like if BC times yes. it right and shuts the farm yeah. down, this is over. Yeah, this is the early like the early to mid castle age is where the Smallian power spike is really gonna come into play. This is where their economy is at its most unhinged compared to other civs, right? Um, so you kinda have to use this timing, especially with China. It's not, you know, Juji, right? Like you don't have this really clean food transition. It is still super expensive. It's just maybe a little bit better in the long run. Yeah, that's the thing. If you reach that true late game, you're much more powerful, which is why Beastie, it's like you're kind of playing tempo like a deli player now, right? Sacred Sight's locked in. One minute's already passed. Unfortunately, by the time he burns through these walls, walls go oh, back he's up. he's getting the relic. He's gonna sack this <laughs> of army course he the is. relic. He doesn't have to. Like, oh, it's already, oh, it's already out there. I thought it was yeah, yeah. to the south more. Okay, wow, nice. Like maybe if it was a fast moving unit, but this is Spearman Crossbow. The wood line on the front is really getting chopped through as well for B, so he's gonna have to think about a way to defend this soon. This is looking hard for him. B? But he's moving away right now. This is just giving access to BC, so move comes in. So if it's charged, yeah, but the B is away. gonna be setting up and the shot's coming in. Spirals are on the way though. Here's Bring a clock down, S to B. Nice back off here, B, just in time before we get sniped. In fact, <laughs> you can see the Spirals are struggling to get in range there. Frontside engagement, villages are still being chased upon, but the crossbow should be able to shut that down. And now the spearmen are look to dive into the main army. Once again, Beastie swatted away. B does take a little bit of eco damage, but while this is happening, more and more farms are getting added in. And crossbows are a problem here. Like he, he, it's almost like he needs the mangonel, right? But that slows down your pacing. One of these springs is going to go down. Nesta Bees is still not being countered. There's going to be a move in now, but one sofa going in is not going to be good enough, surely. You should be able to clear it up. That's now two Nesta Bees to counter this out. 
Beastie, although he finds a little bit of chip damage, he's still not solving this eco escalation. But there's fires everywhere. Like, oh, here we go. That wasn't his full force. He had armies everywhere on the oh minimap, putting pressure everywhere. And that's a full evacuation on the south. He had to give up the hunt on the left. His economy on the north is going to be threatened pretty soon, but it looks like he's already evacuated from there. Beastie has fully set up his macro with almost every eco tech he needs. There's still a seven minute timer for B to get out of this position too. B has so as long as Beast... Like he's completely out of food right now because this raid. Oh yeah. my God. And that's the last relic. Just the reminder, <laughs> hey, I got the last relic coming in. Dang, BC is playing out of his mind right now. Malians are so strong in this position. This is really, really well played. Um, well, he needs to set up for a fight that wins now. So, yes. like, he he did a lot of damage. He's kept the, the opponent pinned. I think now what BC needs to look for is just remass in the center and just win a fight. If he wins a fight, the game is pretty much secured. But there's a chance here for B. If he gets enough of these palace guards out, look like he's starting to train them. If he gets enough bees up, if he has a couple springholds to counter it, his army could very quickly become very threatening. He has enough stone for a keep in just a few stone. Yeah, stone he ran right? out, actually. Uh, that's the problem here. Uh, but, uh oh, spaghettios, <laughs> indeed. Um, he needs to bark it. Just buy it. Like, at this stage, oh just, just, he if he tries, he I think you market. have to. Like, if you run out on that left side to try and get stone, there's sofas here, right? And you need to rush this, because the walls, although they're going to go back up, very soon, well, the they get burnt through. The question is, where does the keep go? Does it go defensively, or do you need it? South side. But do you need offensively for the sacred site push? Because at some point, he has to go towards one of the sacred sites, and generally China can just bring 20 bills and get a uh, keep on the sacred site. Right? You, you, no, because if you do that, the raids still hit the farm, right? And it's like, you're choosing whether you lose in, like, three minutes or ten, right? But I think the way you thread the needle is he wanted this keep drop on those farms, right? It's, it's like a discount Great Wall Gatehouse, right? It's the same effect. Mm -hmm. But the problem is he doesn't like he's not buying the stone. So these raids are going to keep coming. We're now less than six minutes away from a win condition, and in the next fight, BC is not just going to have Springholds, in which, by the way, he's leading. He's also going to have Mangos. Yeah, keep it. It is, it is Clock Tower, but yeah, yeah. And bees, are, I feel like bees are better. But interesting. Good knob hit. It's a little bit of out of time here, B. It's about 40 go ahead, but the problem right now is those farms just don't really feel that impressive still. Beastie getting a keep up here in the center is super solid for him, right on top of his siege. But he did just throw away a decent chunk of his military. Not it's just, it's all spammable though. It just though. buys time, right? Yeah. yeah. Like it's keeping Beastie's head down in the dirt. Like this is a guy that can't get more than 100 food together at any given time. He's just spamming it out. Yet still, every time, militarily, he remains behind. New wall goes up and could immediately just end up going down here. A little bit of a clunky interaction. But the problem that I'm just seeing is B, he's the fireman, but Beastie is hurling Molotovs all across the city. And this fire station feels understaffed. Yeah, just needing a few Mustafati to run in where the rest regroup with the rest of the army. They have to back up here. I feel like B needs to make a play now for one of the sacred sites, right? Left, probably gonna be the best option. He still has 12 stone short the keep i think he's gonna have to buy it right but where's he going is he aiming for the north one or the left one those those aren't the same word but you know what i mean the east one or the, the west he, one yeah i think you have to go for the west one because like the east one is so far out it sucks though because you want to secure gold right so you have a late game here um this move out with trickle troops worries me though like b at this stage you're back oh, the wall the you're four minutes away the bees don't mess with the bees I just, that's not a good enough hit. And now the raid, dude, the raids are in again. This is so frustrating. Like, B, don't look at that. Please don't look at that granary again, because I. <laughs> that's not a full free granary setup. That's like bootleg granaries, right? When someone's like, yo, check out my new Nikes, and the tick is upside down. Yeah, incredible game. This is so action packed. And now going on the left side, it looks like that's confirmation where the keep's going to go, but. I mean, this puts you out of position, right? Like, if Beastie wraps around the back, you're in trouble. Oh, man. Wraparound comes in, so if they're able to escape. But, oh, is this a pincer? The siege on it the is. right. It's in trouble. It's in trouble. Springles as well. That's a lot of Springles. Oh, no. The man goes to follow this up. He's going to bait the fight. B, he can lose it all right oh, here. Nesta no. B's get one flurry out. 
But the oh, return no. fire is going to be the problem. Mango's oh, no. get range. Oh, B no. loses it all. Oh, no. Ugh. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that was an insane surround by Beastie. That was like a classic, like trap maneuver right he got them right in between that forest there was no chance for escape for b there because the siege was in that choke point oh my gosh and that was just destruction that was that was an incredible play meanwhile the raids still happening the the granaries only half of it only half of them are working the pressure comes in on the walls again two minutes remaining on the sacred sites and it seems like the window for b to hold this game together is quickly falling. He's building Trebs, but with what army? He's got to find a way to get through the 11 springholds on the field that Beastie has. So I'm not seeing how a siege push ever really does anything here. That it's is a... 33 population I, I <laughs> in springholds it... alone. <laughs> it's like it's CTQ in full form, right? But he earned it here. This is tough. Like what I just saw from B in the last several minutes was reactions. Never proactivity, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm always a big believer, like, proactivity beats reactivity. And he never had this conversion point. That keep drop never happened. He's still floating a thousand stone that just does nothing here. I think the play would have been buy the stone, drop the keep on the farms, fully set that up, and then commit down the center because your economy yeah. can be stronger at this stage of the game. He just never realized that. And BC, with this non stop oh. aggression, pulling him left and right, seems Sick to have ticked the box. He might be going for the sacred site on the left, though. I mean, you're not going to be quick enough, though. Like, there's a keep there. Good luck. Don't He's have gonna luck. He's going to try. He has to try. Sure, but do I need to quote We're going to get again? to the Ville pull soon, right? Stop looking at those farms. They hurt me. Oh, God. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Zooms in. <laughs> oh, man, that's so funny. This is over. B. An interesting series, you know, some decent flexes, some questionable choices, especially in that game number two. At least this one was not defined by sheep, but it was defined by aggression. Minute away from a sacred site victory, and B simply does not have the force to get out. Wow. And the, the bell dings its final toll. One minute remaining on B. Can he do it? That's a lot of units <laughs> for Beastie just... Just bing chilling. It's got more horse coming. It's like the, the finishing touch, right? Just in case you sneak out. Just in case you send everyone over here. Let's just make sure that this is... Like, this is going to be one of those situations. BC done this oh. on the ladder recently where he just got up from his chair and walked off before the game was over. It is. He's at that stage now. <laughs> he could just do that. Keep drop on the way. Briefly but... paused. That keep is not going to go up. That's a spoiler. I can see the future. The what? keep does not go up. <laughs> but B can afford two keeps, Winston. <laughs> I, here's a Why is he gathering so much stone? <laughs> just... Well, eventually, the, the plan was to secure your game and then push with the Vils dropping a keep while you killed them. Beastie never let that happen. Beastie kept pressuring the sides, <laughs> and the game ends. GG. Oh, B... GG indeed. Wow. Ends with what 2k stone almost in reserve a keep blueprint that never happens i mean you can see that game was scrambled what a play there though beastie relentless aggression right he just can't ever allow the chinese eco to fully come online and i think like you know, maybe the thing that could have been different there's a keep drop that at least allowed b to focus on one thing because it was like watching um, a dog with 15 people whistling at him right like his head is just tilting left and right but he's never able to react to what beastie is doing in all locations Exactly, exactly. It was really tough for him there, for sure. Uh, really, really rough. I mean, we thought, like, we knew going into it that the timing was going to be rough, right, for China. There's, like, that mid-game pressure point where Malians get their full setup, and China have to kind of do their song. China has to do their, their song setup behind that, right? And yeah. it just it didn't really pan together there. It just didn't fully pan together, and I think that's really, really sad for uh, B, because... Hell of a competitor. I really love watching their games. I think we mentioned that multiple times. Like, when these two fight, it's always fireworks. And I really enjoyed that game from the start to the finish. Uh, even with the sheep distribution, once again, causing some issues there for one of the players. Um, it was so great to see. What a great game.